Welcome back to a Vegas Weekly for Saturday, December the 12th, 2020. This year is almost over and it can't end quickly enough. So we're going to talk about a couple of news items uh, this week in Las Vegas. I'm going to introduce you to another great cocktail and uh, talk a little bit more about my experiences in Las Vegas this year and uh, how they relate to uh, you and your future visits. I want to appreciate those of you who joined us on Wednesday for our uh, monthly live stream, which hasn't happened for several months. So we had a good time with that. Several dozen folks showed up and appeared. Uh, JP made uh, reared his ugly head and things got very uh, blurry after that. But we appreciate all of you who joined us for that. And uh, we also added a couple of new members of the channel this past week. Vegas Best Ideas and Cinnamon Girl, thank you all. They join Mark, Matt, and Walt as uh, monthly supporters of the channel. If you want to support the channel uh, in the same way, you can hit that join button. Uh, it's listed right in the show notes below. Uh, not a lot happening in Las Vegas this week, and what is happening in Las Vegas this week has not been a positive thing at all. Rumors are that the governor is considering a shutdown, at least for a couple of weeks, and might announce it sometime within the next few days. The reality is that outside of the weekends, at some of the popular spots, Las Vegas is already in shutdown mode. Uh, not a lot of activity, probably as slow as we've ever seen it. December always is a slow month, but without any conventions and without the National Finals Rodeo this year, it is particularly bleak this year during the week. So much so that the uh, Venetian announced that Palazzo will simply shut down for the next couple of weeks. They'll reopen uh, right around Christmas time to hopefully take advantage of the New Year's Eve business, but they will shut down completely. So we will see what comes of that, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, Nevada has one of the highest uh, percentage testing rates of the COVID-19, and so uh, it's, it, it's, it's concerning. And we just hope that uh, with an upcoming vaccine and uh, over the next couple of months, we will see some of this start to reverse and uh, we'll see some, something positive for a change. Uh, I know uh, I, I've been honestly thinking about planning another trip, but I just kind of playing it by ear. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hopefully uh, sometime early next year, but who knows at this point. So, okay, so like I said, going to be a short show today, but uh, it's never a short show when we get PJ involved and uh, he's got another cocktail for us. And uh, so let's uh, let him share it with us. So uh, PJ, you want to take it away? You want to? Sure. Okay, do it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cocktail of the Week with your host and not a professional bartender, PJ. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our episode of Cocktail of the Week. We've got another holiday cocktail for you all. John! John, how are you doing, John? We're almost there, just a couple more weeks. Uh, by the way, I like your Las Vegas uh, in rev your review. Year in review, <laughs> review of Las Vegas trips 2020. I don't know, it's been a crazy year. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot wait to get this over and start 2021, uh, hopefully with a big bang. Anyhow, today we're making a very simple uh, winter cocktail. You've heard of uh, sex on the beach, sex in the driveway, sex on the sidewalk, sex in the bed, how about sex on a snowbank? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, sex on a snowbank. <laughs> Just two simple ingredients, coconut rum and uh, coconut cream. We're going to uh, garnish our martini glass with uh, coconut rim, and then we're gonna throw some ice in our blender with the coconut uh, rum and uh, cream and uh, make ourselves sex on a snowbank. Are you ready? I think so. Well, let's get started, shall we? All righty. Well, first thing we wanna do is uh, rim our martini glass. All right, fine, that's gonna do it. <laughs> All right, well, then what we're gonna do, one and a half ounces of uh, coconut cream. 
set that aside. We're just going to assume or guess that is one and a half ounces. One and a half ounces of uh, coconut rum. Well, we're still using Parrot Bay. I know most of you probably have uh, Malibu, uh, which Malibu is very good. Parrot Bay actually is a tad sweeter. So if you like your rum sweet, coconut rum sweet, go that route. Okay, a bunch of ice cubes. I do with the Christmas shop. You don't have to put me on the list this year. I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. Get this on there. One too many cubes. Pop that in. Clean that up. Bring this over and let's see how we do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Um, that took a while. That took a while to get to get going. <laughs> Shit. All right, fine. Uh, we still got some crushed ice in here, but let's uh, let's get to pouring this puppy. If it'll if it'll even pour. Oop. I'm making, I'm making a serious mess. Uh, hey, it's all good. It's the holidays, and uh, we should all be in a good mood. So, ladies and gentlemen, John, let me present to you sex on a snowbank. How does that look? Not too shabby, huh? Not too shabby. Not too shabby. John, cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, happy holidays. Let's see how we taste. Oh, it tastes very, very sweet. Mm. <laughs> oh man, what a what a show, what a show. That is so sweet. <laughs> I don't know. It's still worth trying, ladies and gentlemen. It's still worth trying. Coconut rum, coconut cream if you got some, um, and uh, obviously some ice. Uh, you're going to need a blender. Rim it with coconut if you like, and uh, enjoy. Enjoy indeed. So, please, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> once again, let John know how much you enjoy the show. If nothing else, in the comments down below, just wish him a Merry Christmas. Wish us all a Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. A happy Boxing Day for our Canadian friends up to the north. And um, leave a thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Actually, no. One thumbs up. Two thumbs up is going to be a thumbs down. So let's do one thumbs up. Leave a comment, like I said. And also, please, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get John to 10,000 subscribers. We're only... 8,500 away. We can do it, ladies and gentlemen. Just like I said, tell three friends. They tell three friends. And so on, and so on, and so on. Next thing you know, John's got 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> I don't know what's in every day. I, I, I don't know. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> cheers. Happy holidays. Peace. We're out of here. All right, PJ, as always, thank you for your contribution to our show. If you'd like to uh, give PJ a week off, I'm going to post my uh, email address right below, and uh, maybe you can uh, do the cocktail of the week for a week or so. So, 
Last week, we talked a little bit about the places we've stayed in Las Vegas this past year, particularly the Wynn and the Luxor, and uh, uh, how much we enjoyed that. And uh, so I thought today we'd talk about some of the places that we ate and drank in Las Vegas and uh, our feedback on that. So I uh, had to actually go back and look at some of the footage from January because that's been a long time ago. That's like 11 months ago. So I had to go check out uh, some of the places that we hung out and things that we did there. So uh, some of the places that we ate on this trip, I, I, first time I've ever checked out the Market Street Cafe at the Cal downtown. And really, I think of all the sort of coffee shop places that still exist downtown, I think this is the best one. Um, had myself some, you know, breakfast food at like two in the morning and it was very very good uh, and of course you can also get the famous uh, oxtail soup there if you're so inclined but uh, I would say Market Street Cafe is a big win so if you're in the area definitely check it out I take it over the uh, um, you know seagulls at uh, El Cortez um, you know, the D Grill, any number of other places around downtown. I think it's probably the best spot. In addition, we did check out the Whiskey Liquor Up, but I did not eat there. Just had a couple of cocktails there, but that is a really, really cool spot. If you haven't checked it out, uh, you know, you head upstairs at Binion's and uh, there's a rotating bar. Gives you a great view of Fremont Street. They have some great drinks. From what I hear, the uh, the wings there are good. So definitely a place you can check out some food and beverage options uh, and uh, just have a great time on Fremont Street. So there you go. In the January trip, I also checked out a couple of coffee shop sort of places, but not the kind with uh, $2.99 steak and eggs, but uh, ate at the uh, the coffee shop at Treasure Island, had steak and eggs there. It was not by any means cheap, but it was good. If you're in the neighborhood late at night and need something uh, to fill your stomach, I can recommend it. The other place that I did check out was at the Wynn, the Terrace Point Cafe. It's open for uh, definitely for breakfast and lunch. Uh, good, good quality, uh, as most everything is at the Wynn. Great service. And again, very, very pricey for the money. Um, I, I had like a burger and fries. It was like $40. Uh, and it was okay. It was, it was pretty good. But it wasn't $40 pretty good, so... I would say if you're uh, if you're at the win and you uh, need a burger, fries, or something, I check out the uh, Charlie's uh, Sports Grill place right next to the uh, uh, sports book. I think it's a little bit less expensive, and I would say that would be my choice if you want a decent value at the win. Um, my trip just this past October. I did have an opportunity to check out a number of places that I've never visited before. And one of those was the stage door. And it, people have a, a sort of a opinion of the stage door that uh, it's kind of a seedy place, kind of a rough place, but that was not my experience at all. I uh, went there a couple of times and they are very, very uh, security conscious as far as letting people in there. And, uh, on both occasions, I, I never felt remotely threatened, never felt like I was in an environment that uh, you wouldn't want to be in. And beyond that, the uh, the bartenders are beautiful. I'm telling you, they're beautiful. Tiffany, it, hit me up, call me, call me. I'm waiting for, for Tiffany. But uh, yeah, lovely uh, bartenders, very friendly, great service there at the stage door. And if you'd like to get a hot dog, you know, they'll... They'll serve you one of those two as well. But uh, stage door was awesome. And right next door to the stage door is Batista's Hole in the Wall. And uh, my good friends Andy and Simone, good speed of Good Times Productions, uh, they were kind enough to invite me along for their uh, big sort of Batista's dinner. 
turned out to be my last night in town, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and Batista's has been around for decades. It is a very, very traditional Italian-American sort of place. This is not a Lydia Bastianich uh, with the, like incredibly, uh, you know, authentic Italian meals. But if you're looking for like pasta and red sauce, they do it very, very well. Um, I had some spaghetti and meatballs and it really, really hit the spot. Again, not cheap, but uh, I, I would totally revisit uh, Batista's. I uh, really, really enjoyed that place and uh, it's good fun. They even had the, uh, the minestrone, uh, which was good. I, I, I really like soup. I, I like soup more than I eat soup. So it was kind of fun to, uh, to enjoy some, uh, some soup as well. And they have wine and cappuccino and bread and everything. And so it, it's definitely, like I said, if you're looking for the kind of an Italian American experience, uh, definitely go take a couple of your friends. Uh, from what I understand, it might not be around for that much longer, so you're definitely going to want to check it out while it is. Otherwise, this uh, past uh, October's trip to Las Vegas has been highlighted mostly by hot dogs. That's right. And not, sadly, the uh, the great uh, Barbary dogs at uh, Cromwell, which I understand they're no longer serving, and this makes me Cry, crying, see me crying right there. But anyway, so, but yeah, so we had, uh, I did check out the foot long at Nathan's Hot Dogs at the Luxor and actually was quite good. I really did enjoy that. It was a very tasty meal uh, overall. So yeah, you want to do that, check it out. I'm not sure I can definitely recommend the footlong wieners at Casino Royale. They are filling, obviously, but a little bit uh, creepy uh, as far as it goes. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so uh, you definitely can fill up on that. But, uh, but yeah, so otherwise, didn't really eat at a lot of uh, particularly interesting places on this trip. We uh, uh, went to uh, Twin Peaks. And Twin Peaks, that where we went? No, Tilted Kilt. That's where we went. Tilted Kilt. Uh, uh, Andy, Simone, Walt, and I went to Tilted Kilt. Lovely ladies, and uh, had some good wings there. But uh, yeah, that's that's hardly a Vegas uh, spectacular by any means. Uh, but not not a bad spot. This is uh, decent food. Very you know respectable food by any means. So we will see. <sighs> Been like I said, been thinking uh, a lot about uh, getting back to Vegas sometime next year. I went on uh, the M Life uh, site this, like yesterday and had a ridiculous number of free rooms and comps with them. Still have some good comps with Caesars, so <sighs> I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of waiting for this whole uh, COVID thing to hopefully play itself out soon. And uh, then we'll make some decisions on that. But thank you all so much for watching uh, every week. It's been great connecting with so many good people. And uh, we will be back again next week, uh, one week from Christmas for uh, uh, Vegas Weekly on December the 19th. And uh, hope that you stay healthy and happy. And uh, until then, we will uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.